Hey, it's Bonzo guy, Ollie. He is an asshole. All right, folks, today on the bench, we have a TF4060 card, accelerator card. Uh, it's one of the many accelerator cards uh, done by Terrible Fire. And this is his latest. Uh, it's pretty much just finished. And it's, uh, I think, the final, or at least the, the production firmware is just done. And uh, I, I know Stephen for a while. And he's been working on this pretty much ever since I've known him. Um, and uh, this this was probably, he'll admit to that, his, uh, his toughest card uh, so far. But he has finished it. It's done. And this is... Uh, one of the, um, well, it says it here, uh, early bird uh, version, meaning it's it's the sort of the pre-production version uh, that was uh, released to Chucky and I think a few others. Anyway, long story short, this is part of my Reamiga 3000 because SCSI is proving to be quite tricky and I've sent back the DMAC uh, to Chucky to check if it worked and it works, but... Uh, I don't quite want to run, or I don't quite need to run on SCSI, because once this is built, I can actually run a, 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 a card, a CF card, right off that, and uh, have it boost to that. So I will do it that way. It's, it's actually a lot better than using SCSI. SCSI is anyway unreliable. So what we've done is uh, I sent him back the DMAC and we sort of did a swap for parts. Uh, so Chucky has sent me that, he sent me as well all the parts required uh, to to build this uh, along with the 060 uh, CPU. So we should have everything to build this card and that's what we're going to do on this video. Oh, what now? This video is a sponsor well, by well, PC... No, 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 we don't do that here. They make the PCB... Okay. They offer PCB manufacturing and part assembly, of course, but they also offer a number of other services like CNC machining, metal sheet fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding. Pretty much anything you need for all your projects. Go to PCBWay.com, upload your project files, and get an instant quote. And thank you to them for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Thank you, PCB. The thing is, the bottom is mostly populated. Um, I think Chucky said this was uh, pre-populated, but it looks like this was actually hand uh, hand soldered. So maybe, maybe Chucky did this part of the job before, or maybe had this uh, already done. I don't know, but uh, whichever way. <laughs> it's good news. Uh, there's still a couple of things to do here. Um, there's two RAMs to populate here. More here. There's a clock buffer. Which one is it? Is it this one or this one? I can't remember. Uh, there's a few. Uh, 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 there's another IC here. I'm not sure which one it is. We'll come to that maybe later. And there's the uh, CPLD uh, to populate here. And then all the headers and connectors and that kind of stuff. So it's quite an. Uh, uh, involved build uh, the pitch on these is quite small so we're gonna use my trusty uh, microscope to do this so so as we get started there's a few capacitors and stuff to put it on this side but I think first I'm gonna start with those two guys and get that bottom part of the board uh, all done Okay, so that's those two uh, rams in place here and next we're gonna flip the board over and I have a few passives 
uh, to put in those uh, capacitors here. Uh, there's more here, there's a few here. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have a look around. Again, I mean, Chuck, he didn't have to, uh, but he provided me with uh, the uh, correct capacitors. Actually, all these are 22 ohm resistors, and there's four of them, and they go around here. Uh, around, I think it's the clock buffer here, IC11. And the rest, the small ones, are 100 nanofarad. So they all, uh, all the small ones uh, go here. I think there's a few other here and there. And the rest, indeed, are uh, 1205 or 1206. I can't remember which is which. Uh, 1206. And the, uh, the uh, it's the size 0805 will fit just fine on these. Uh, we should, I think, are these what 10 nanofarad or something like that? Okay, so I have the uh, rest of the uh, resistors, capacitors all in place. Uh, I've got the uh, two RAMs in place now. Um, we're gonna put these uh, smaller ICs. So we've one here with the clock buffer here and this guy here. Uh, so we've three ICs to put in uh, before we tackle these guys. Right, so we got those three ICs in place. Next, we're gonna need to put the uh, lattice here and the Xilinx uh, IC here. so the build is now finished uh, next step is to actually connect a, a Raspberry Pi Zero uh, to uh, this connector here because uh, Chucky has made a very very handy guide uh, on how to program this guy so we need to program two things the uh, ROM and the uh, the uh, uh, CPLD the Xilinx so uh, this is where the Pi comes in so we're gonna solder those uh, uh, pins here, put this in the header, and we need to set up this Raspberry Pi uh, to receive all the firmware and, and uh, program it to uh, apply the firmware to the board. And if you're wondering, at the time I'm recording this, uh, which uh, would be uh, at the end of August, this is the latest uh, latest uh, post on this page, and it described how to uh, uh, We'll install even the Raspberry Pi image. If you've never done anything like that, um, uh, it's 
it's useful uh, otherwise you can probably skip to the point where you have to update the Raspberry Pi um, with the uh, right software but it's a very very detailed guide and uh, Chucky and I told him that that you make very good guides and he does they're very very thorough all right so this took a while uh, because for multiple reasons uh, first I had the wrong Pi I had a Pi Zero which doesn't have Wi-Fi, so you need a Pi Zero W or Pi Zero Two, uh, which is the new version uh, W W. I assume means Wi-Fi. Actually, correction: the reason you want a Pi Zero Two uh, W with uh, Wi-Fi is to be able to SSH into it, because you need to install a lot of stuff, um, a clone uh, a GitHub repositories. Um, to be able to flash the CPL and the FPGA. It's much easier to SSH into it from another computer. Um, otherwise, you need to have like an HDMI adapter, a keyboard adapter, all that kind of stuff, which I didn't have. So it's just easier to, um, to get a, a Wi-Fi enabled one and SSH into it. And I followed Chucky's guide, so you need to update a lot of stuff. Uh, I have a, just a very, very basic image uh, running of the ID port. And the Pi here is just used to program the CPLD and the, uh, the FPGA. Anyway, long story short. <laughs> so this is my uh, one of my Amiga 1200 uh, images. It was just a quick rig uh, to uh, check that this uh, works. Uh, so essentially, that's it, folks. Uh, what I'll do at some point is I'll get a bigger card, uh, probably 8 gig, and uh, make my own 3000 uh, dedicated image. I probably will do away with the uh, the blue uh, the blue theme. I'll probably go for uh, for this one. I'll go for the uh, the gray themed uh, kickstart. Upgrade all that, uh, get a better OS on this. But this is it. This is, uh, I, I don't think I have sysinfo on this. Uh, so I can't exactly show it to you. But the fact that this boots of the ID card that's on the TF card uh, tells me that it's all working. We've now uh, uh, a, an accelerator, an 060 accelerator on uh, this uh, Amiga 3000, and we're booting off the ID card into kickstart uh, workbench um folks that's it that's the build <laughs> that's that's the motherboard uh, i know uh, there's more to it we'll have to find a case down the line that's another job and a half i'm not going to do that on this video uh, the, the purpose of this video is actually to build the the tf4060 uh, accelerator card uh, i'll have to find a better solution but here it is um I, I I don't think I need that pie on there anymore. But I'll probably just leave it there anyway. Um, if uh, there's any, uh, because the, the the firmware is still being updated by Steven. There's still a few bugs, um, minor bugs to fix and that kind of stuff. So I'll just make sure that uh, we get that uh, neat firmware. Uh, but there you go, folks. This is it. Uh, thank you very much for watching this uh, long, long series uh, of building an Amiga 3000, uh, a re-Amiga 3000 from scratch. Thank you, huge thank you, obviously, to Chucky for sorting me out uh, with uh, the, the chipset and, and more. Uh, pretty much a lot of the uh, ICs that you see here, uh, he helped me uh, with. Uh, it really sorted me out with bro prices as well and uh, really uh, useful information on building this. Uh, and then, uh, you know, when we found out that I made a mistake with my, it's my own mistake, or, well, I don't know. I think I had a dodgy one of these, but uh, technically I don't need SCSI now uh, anyway. So we ended up swapping the DMAC uh, with the uh, board for this and the full chipset for it. And uh, it, it worked out for the best uh, because now we've a, a, a Riemiya 3000 uh, fully working. Um, thank you to Terrible Fire as well for sorting me out with the PCB. I got this from him uh, when he came to visit me in France. This is one of Chucky's boards, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's one that uh, Terrible Fire gave to me. And huge thank you again to Terrible Fire, of course, for making uh, these accelerator cards. And uh, thank you very much for that, dude. Uh, folks, this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope this series was interesting. If you want to help the channel, there's a Patreon page uh, and there's YouTube memberships. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.